Welcome to my channel guys. So in this video we are going to be talking about Long Dream from the year 2000. It is a Japanese made for TV horror movie written by Higuchinsky and Koyoshi Nanatsuki and directed by Higuchinsky based on a short story manga of the same name by Junji Ito. So I am actually am really excited to do this review and I was really excited to watch this movie because I absolutely love Junji Ito. He's my favorite manga artist. In this video, I even changed my background a little bit. I put my little Tamie over there in the background. I mean, it's a totally different Junji Ito's manga. But that's the only Junji Ito's related Funko Pop that I have. So I added that one in the background for this video to be kind of relevant, like somewhat. And Long Dream happens to be one of my favorite short stories by him it's a extremely creepy short story manga but until very recently i had no idea that there was actually a movie based on this manga and i found out about it randomly when i saw somebody's instagram post about it so of course i had to check this movie out and luckily i was able to find it on youtube sick and you shall find right so just like the short story it is based on long dream focuses on some doctors in a hospital trying to treat this patient with really bizarre symptoms. A 26 year old man named Tetsuru Mokoba comes to the hospital and complains about having extremely long dreams. According to Tetsuru, every time he falls asleep, days, months, years, and eventually even centuries pass within his dreams. And while the doctors initially don't take him seriously, they eventually become to realize that there might be some truth to his story as Tetsuo begins to not only deteriorate mentally but also undergo really bizarre and frightening physical transformation as a side effect of him having those extremely long dreams. One of the reasons why I was always so fascinated by the manga that this movie is based on is because I find this whole concept to be genuinely really fucking frightening and creepy. And therefore, I would definitely highly recommend watching this movie based on how frightening and interesting this concept is alone. Like, this movie is definitely worth checking out to me just because of the concept of it. And maybe I am being just a tiny bit biased here because, like I said, I really love Junji Ito. But whatever the case may be, I do feel like the premise alone for this movie makes it worth checking out. Now, if you do decide to watch this movie, you should definitely adjust your expectations first accordingly because it is, like I said, a made-for-TV, extremely low-budget movie and it definitely shows, okay? Um, it doesn't have the best acting, it doesn't have the best production quality, could have used better lightning, the picture is kind of blurry at times, and the special effects, um, how do I put this? Not great, right? Like the special effects, certain body horror elements of this movie when the character of Tetsuo begins ongoing all those transformations. You could clearly see that they slapped some cheap ass prosthetics on his face. You can see plain as day. Nevertheless, the effect of him undergoing that transformation is still pretty unsettling to look at. It's still pretty creepy and it looks like ripped straight from the pages of the manga. They did do their best to bring the visuals from the manga on screen and even though they clearly did not have the budget to like really pull it off and it didn't always translate on screen in the best way i definitely give them props for trying and they definitely did try there unfortunately very few of those really bizarre junji ito like visuals from the manga in this movie i was hoping for much more but it is still there and like i said even though it looks really cheesy and very very fake it is still manages to be pretty unsettling at the same time and like the transformation that this character undergoes it's especially frightening once you realize the implications of why his body is undergoing this transformation now my main problem with this movie though is not its low budget and not how cheesy certain things in this movie look and not even the extremely sentimental sounding background music that they sometimes employ in this movie that that's at times really took away from this creepy atmosphere 
atmosphere to the movie and put me more in the mind of like a TV drama than a horror movie, even if I made for TV one. No, my main problem with, it, with this movie is none of those things, but the fact that they felt the need to, for some reason, add this completely unnecessary subplot of one of the doctors having all those flashbacks about his dead girlfriend Kana and all of the backstories between about him and Kana and how he's like obsessed with either bringing her back to life or meeting her in the afterlife or something along those lines and them adding this subplot I did not care for at all and I understand in a way why they felt the need to add it in the first place they do need to you know add certain fillers to the story to fill out the movie's running time okay fine but my thing is that in the second half of this movie this whole subplot with a dead girlfriend it completely takes over the movie okay it's at that point it becomes like almost like a different movie about this doctor and his dead girlfriend and it just really irritated me so as a result um i like the first um 30 minutes or so of this film the first half of it a lot better than I like the second half and this movie is only like um, an hour long so I don't know if it was like a uh, like a episode of a Japanese TV show like a Japanese Twilight Zone or something like that because it's like really short even for a made for TV movie regardless though once the second half of the movie kicks in and that whole subplot about the dead girlfriend takes over to me the movie began to really drag and I could not wait for it to end so like the first half of this movie is definitely much better and superior to me than the second half of it the second half I did not care for but I do feel like it did redeem itself itself towards the end of the movie where they threw in that kind of like a twist ending and that was also something that was not from the manga something they also added on for the movie only but that part of the movie I actually enjoyed like the twist ending was pretty cool but the whole thing with the flashbacks of the dead girlfriend taking over the plot of the movie I did not care for it did let me down in the second half of it but like I said I would still recommend you guys to check it out especially if you are a Junji it was fan like myself and you really enjoy that long dream story or any other of his manga for that matter then i think that this is definitely a must see and even if you are not familiar with junji ito his manga i feel like it's mo this movie is still worth checking out for the really really creepy concept in itself i mean imagine having long dreams like that i would not wish that on my worst enemy that truly sounds like a fucking nightmare that you just cannot wake up from so at the end of the day i would give this movie a rating of a 6 out of 10 so thank you guys for watching if you had seen long dream then definitely let me know what did you guys think about it in the comments if you are familiar with the junji Ito's manga that this is based on then let me know in the comments what did you guys think about the changes that they had made to the story for the sake of this tv adaptation and if you know of any other junji Ito's adaptations that i should check out or review on my channel in the future then definitely let me know that in the comments as well and if you are new to this channel and i enjoyed my reviews so far then then definitely go on ahead and give this video a like subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you wouldn't miss any future videos and i will see you in the next one okay bye